Natalie, have you had, uh, what has been the appetite for coverage of Haiti at the Times and how have you, um, what, are the, what are the decisions around, I mean, given how difficult and slow and insecure things are, what, what are the decisions that go into when you do and don't cover something? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, you know, um, we've, we've tried to do as much Katie coverage as we possibly can. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm really proud of um, the work that we've been able to do, um, relying on on the trust and the support of Andre and so many others that have really helped us out on the ground there. Um, my colleague Maria who's just did, did incredible work um, and so many of our sources, honestly. I mean, the thing is that um, the paper wants good stories and, and, and wants good reporting. And I think we have um, been convinced that what's happening in, in Haiti is, is one of the most um, important um, and consequential moments in the region. I mean, I cover more than a dozen countries and I spend a lot of time on Haiti. Um, and that's because it matters a lot to us and to the to the paper. And, um, you know, I think it's it's not easy, obviously, um, because of a lot of what we're saying, like it can be very difficult. You have to go for a lot of time. Um, and and you don't know what you're going to get, because it's not like you know, and a lot of other, there's a lot of hard countries that I cover, you know, um, covering gangs in Honduras and El Salvador and Guatemala is not easy either. You know, there's a lot of violence in, in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, but there is something that is um, really unique about Haiti, which is that um, the scenario on the ground is so volatile. And so, you know, I think, um, I am so happy about how much coverage there's been, how many of these colleagues on this panel have done a lot of coverage and people that are watching, I know are doing a lot of coverage. You know, I think we all work together to kind of bring Haiti onto the fore every day. Um, and so it's not just it's by no means just the times. Um, in fact, it's much more the folks that are on this panel that are doing this every day that really do shine a spotlight on it and then make it, I think, impossible for the decision makers in Washington to ignore it. Um, you know, the AP, the Haitian Times, the Miami Herald are just the beginning. There's so many people on the ground that are doing this every day. And, um, and I think we all share this responsibility, you know, and I think we all feel that, that it's a real responsibility, you know, um, because, um, because there's a lot going on. There's a, there's a war in Ukraine right now, you know? And so um, we, we're, trying to, we're trying to do our best to, to shine a light when we can. I mean, I think we all are doing that, so. Jackie, now that we, we have you back, um, you know, I think it's easy for people who aren't following Haiti on a daily basis to see these headlines, gangs, violence, and not really, understand the context and the nuance of what the political situation is and what's really at the root cause of all this. How, I mean, can you first give us a primer if you could about really the, the root of the of the power dynamics and what's feeding? Okay. Okay. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to just follow up on something that Andre yeah. said um, that uh, he touched on an important issue about post Jovenel Moise's assassination. Um, and which adds to the volatility. So last year we went to um, Port de Pet in the Northwest when I was doing my migration series and there's no airport. So going there by road meant that you could possibly more than likely get kidnapped by gangs because there were a lot of gang alleyway, you know, um, corridors. And so we had to charter a plane where you're landing on a road in the middle of a market. And I really did not know how bad things were going to be in the sense of how we were just not being well received. Like people were convinced that the Americans and the French had something to do with Jovenel's assassination. Um, you, you're, you're constantly sort of like under this threat. Um, at the same time with the economic situation, people want money. Um, so you always have to take into consideration, you know, the people that you're talking to, are you putting them in danger? Um, because 
they see you a foreigner talking to them and do they think that you have paid or whatever. Um, and at one point we went to one of the offshoot islands, me and my colleague was actually temporarily like held hostage on a boat um, just because these people were, you know, um, insisting that we had something to do with the assassination. Um, and, you know, it just became this very sort of touch and go situation. So um, I think, you know, I get requests from people all the time, hey, I want to go to Haiti and I want to do this. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> you know, the days of going to Haiti, especially with your cameras, um, people are not open to that. OK, so you so you also have to get very creative um, in time. So, so I would just like to put that out there. Um, and that's been a huge change. Um, you know, pe people are not necessarily welcoming you. Um, so, so there's that. Um, the, the, the political dynamics, I mean, look, um, you have a situation here where I always tell people, you know, you may see people sort of, there, there are no real, just, just not a leftist in a, in a rightist, okay? People like to say, oh, this is a leftist or these people are from the right and a conservative ideology doesn't really work in this place. You know, I think that sort of went out the window. I hear people talk about, oh, Lavalas and Aristide. I think we, we, we are past that, um, you, you know, what happens is, is that it, it's basically a competition for power. You know, um, it's a competition for jobs. Uh, you know, I, I need to get a job. Um, you, you, you find people who are well-meaning and they want to go into government or they think they want to do something for the country and think they can. But the, mach the machine, it, it's the, you know, the bureaucracy. You have people who have been working in um, government for decades and they are not open to change. You know, they're not gonna computerize. They're not gonna do this. They are the people that are going to um, be sort of undermining. I remember during Rene Preval's um, presidency, there was a minister, God rest the dead, he since died, but he hired a lot of people. And one of the things that was happening was the people that he hired had to basically give him like kickbacks for his political party because he was creating a war chest for a potential you know, campaign. And I remember how appalling that was then. And here we are today and it's almost become common. You know, I remember Jacques Edouard Lexi, the prime minister, you know, was giving money to deputies in the lower chamber so that they can do pet projects um, in their communities and the international community railed against that and called it corruption. Well, post that we had something called Petro Caribe. So I think that you, you, you have to sort of understand the context and you hit the right word nuance. This place, there's a lot of nuance and, and you have to kind of understand the nuance. And it doesn't mean that you don't quote this person, but you also got to figure out, okay, what's with their beef? What, you know, where they're coming from? What's what's their relationship with this and that? So I always like to say, I like to know where the um, the grenades are going to go off and the, the landmines are going to go off. You know, so when I step on them, I, I, I know they're coming. Um, and so that's what it is. I think, you know, one of the frustrations I know that people on the political terrain is have with me because you know, often they also want to use you in their campaign. You have to be very careful not to be manipulated um, because they, 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 they want to get the attention of the quote unquote, the blonde, the white, the Americans. Um, and so they will, you know, yeah, they will do their, 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 their spin and tell it to you sort of one, one side. And so you're always, you know, I'm always very sort of reluctant and leery of that. Um, and, you know, my editor has no patience now for the incremental in terms of politics. So he's like, okay, wake me up when something huge, you know, changes. Because after a while it does sort of get, you know, exhausting. Mm -hmm. But I think you're always striving to kind of put it into context. The story I did, you know, when there were, there were 10 senators, it wasn't just like, oh, the last of the lawmakers, you know, they were there, they weren't doing anything anyway. But it's like, what does that mean? The larger picture about democracy, about the constitution, about where we where we've been and and sort of the way forward. So that's always the challenge because after a while it can get sort of you feel like okay I've done this story already. So you're always looking for you know how to pivot forward, how to tell you know the question you asked me sort of the coming year where do we go? That's some trying to sort of foreshadow um, and and look for those stories there that are not like you know in your face. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you.